Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope everybody's doing good. You know it's been three years, almost three years, since Summer uh, Moon Wells went missing. Uh, Summer Moon Utah Wells, that's her name. And uh, well, she was five years old. Uh, she went missing on June 15, 2021. And um, not no information has come out since then, really, that's helped the case at all. I mean, she's gone, and it's pretty much a cold case. Um, but there is a new interview by her uh, parents, and I want to show you that. Uh, I just gave an interview, so I thought I would... Thought this was interesting. Years since the disappearance of then five year old Summer Wells from her Hawkins County home. The night she was reported missing, authorities said Summer was last seen walking from her home on Ben Hill Road in the Beach Creek community. Hours later, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation would issue an endangered child alert for her that would later turn into an Amber Alert. To this day, law enforcement still has not located Summer Wells and are not any closer to finding her. News Channel 11's Ansley. Daniel spoke with Summer's parents. We have pushed investigators for months to learn about new details or updates in this case. What we do know is that her family continues their search to bring Summer home. I spoke with both Dawn and Candace Wells in Kingsport at a place with deep meaning to Summer's disappearance. Borden Park is anything but quiet this time of year. But three years ago, it was filled almost weekly with people praying for Summer Wells. I see all these families, you know, with their kids and how much they enjoy them and stuff. And we were stripped away from all our kids. All our kids have been kidnapped from us by DCS. And who know? we're not sure about Summer, but we know about our, where our boys are at. Well, the um, yeah, that's, uh, they took the kids away, folks, by the way, um, because of the conditions of the home. Allegedly, the prayer vigils are now few and far between. Don and Candace Wells haven't stopped praying that their daughter Summer will be found. We have hope, always. I mean, but there's not much hope in this world. It's like, you know, we have. We have to trust God that there's hope and eternal life in heaven. Summer was reported missing on June the 15th of 2021. We know that she was taken off her property and we know she was taken away in a vehicle or they would have found her in the area if she was somewhere in the area. Now, listen to what he's saying right there. He knows that, they, that she was taken off by a vehicle. Now, how would he know that? Um, but who's responsible for her? I don't, we don't know. I asked Don and Candace when was the last time they heard from investigators. We haven't lately at all. It's been a while, over a year, I think. And notice Candace not saying a damn thing. I haven't talked to any law enforcement at all. I tried to talk to the FBI agent about it, but that didn't go anywhere. Don says he feels that he and his wife, Candace, were targeted by the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. They intimidated us, they belittled us, and done everything they could amidst all the, the chaos, and then the CPS was there doing the same thing. When asked about how he thinks about Summer's disappearance three years later, Don spoke about a Department of Children's Services investigation. They said somebody had called and said that we was giving our kids loaded guns to play with. And so they closed the case June 14th, which is something CPS does not do. They don't. And notice he didn't, he didn't deny out of that. Now, just get me right. I mean, you know, folks understand, I'm not uh, accusing them of any wrongdoing, but we all know that kept up with this story, um, that they, they know something about this case more than they're letting on. I, I'm almost, I'm 100% sure of that. I'm not alleging that they've done something to Summer, but, you know, it's just awful sad to know some of the stuff that was going on in that house. Um, and I, as far as I know, I, I mean, I, I don't think we'll ever really find out what happened to the Summer. It's so sad, it really is just closed cases so it's really odd and mystifying why they closed the case June 14th and then 24 hours later summer's gone summer's mother Candace sat in for part of
Yeah, and she didn't, she, of course, she didn't want to talk. Of our interview, but got up after a few questions. She was going to try, but her emotions are just too much. The last update in the Summer Wells case from law enforcement was an age progressed photo released in June of last year. This image was released by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Summer Wells, call 1 800 TBI Find. That number is right there on your screen. Yeah, so that's, well, what a. Oh, Lord, what a sad, sad case. Um, folks, let me know if you kept up with that uh, story in the in the comments, because um, I'm going to tell you, I did. I kept up with it just like all the time. And this is their property right here, or it was. I guess they're still there. I don't know. They, um, I don't keep up with none of their stuff that they say online. Um, there was a, it was a long time there that, that it was just going strong. I mean, it was like the Sebastian Rogers case, you know, um, people were trying to get the word out. They were trying to, you know, do interviews and then Don and Candace would get on there and they're all, um, drunk, drugged up and whatever. I mean, allegedly, and they, um, they made a mockery of this whole uh, case of summer and you know just I don't know what a sad thing but this being their property and uh, it had been searched so much but you know you notice when he said that uh, somebody picked summer up in a car or, or took off allegedly with her in a car well there's a lot of people that is speculating and again just speculating uh, we don't have any evidence, but this is the little barn down below their house. And if I'm not mistaken, mistaken I believe they own this little shed. And um, there's been a lot of people that has talked about the shed. And um, there's people that online, I mean, I heard stories where... They, they said that, or the neighbors said that they know for sure what happened to Summer that day, that she was dropped off in this little building, allegedly. Um, and um, she somebody was supposed to pick her up, and they never brought her back. And in his interviews, Don Wells, the daddy of Summer, he, he always says, he always said even in the beginning that he feels that somebody kidnapped her that took off with her and you know and in a sense you have to listen to what he's saying there because it wouldn't be far-fetched because I do remember that um, when he was interviewed in one of the interviews he was talking about that um, um, he got home from work and he went directly down to the shed and he said, well, and people were looking for him, they, or his kids was looking for him. And he said he had got there before the police had got there to the property. But in fact, the police was already there, from what I understand. Uh, but he, instead of going to the house, he goes to this little shed. And, um, and he's, done, he's done plenty of interviews, and he talks about, you know, he, he still thinks that um, uh, somebody took off with her. And, in fact, if if that, if that this is true, you think about it, folks, if it is true, um, a lot of people allegedly are saying, or back in the day on these interviews, they were saying, claiming that they knew or their neighbors and friends. I mean, it was so many people that had got on... Um, YouTube and was doing stories about this and people close to the uh, Wells family uh, said they they saw Don do horrible things uh, you know like showering nude with Summer and just all kind of crazy stuff and that he once tried to sell one of his children on a street corner um, allegedly um, so kind of tells you you know kind of tells you what kind of what kind of people 
uh, you're dealing with here. And, you know, and this is a very rural area. I mean, there is no, there's hardly any cell phone service. I mean, it's very bad here. Um, this area that they live in up here, I mean, it's just very wooded from what they say. It looks like it, too. I mean, from all the interviews that I've seen, um, that it's, it is pretty rough up in here. Um, uh, but police and everything, uh, I mean, all the searchers rescue all this. They went all these areas. There was plenty, I mean, a lot of searches. Now, not to say that she may have wandered off, but most, most investigators and profilers and everybody that uh, talked about this case, um, they all pretty much agree that she never left this house. And this is their house right here. Um, they just feel like she, it's, it, whatever happened, she didn't leave this house. That's the grandma's trailer, or it was. I don't know if the grandma's still there, Candace's mom. Um, but Candace's story was they went and they had all this great stuff going on for the day. They went to the horse pond somewhere in Rogersville, you know. Um, they went swimming and even she got, uh, she fell in the water or the wrong way and went under the water. And then, um, uh, her cousin or whoever, or nephew, whoever he was, um, or Candace's nephew, Hunter, was there, and uh, I don't know, it was just a big old mess, horrible, horrible mess, and they have, I think they have three other boys, and they, from what I understand, they'll never get their boys back, um, and you know, these boys, one of them was old enough, or a couple of them was old enough to kind of know what was going on, and they're going to, you know, they're going to grow up, and they're going to remember this this day three years ago. They're going to remember, and they're going to know what happened. And, I mean, and I'm sure when they get 18, I mean, they can talk then, you know? Right now, you, you're never, you'll not get anything from the, uh, the boys because they're in, uh, I guess, foster care or something. Um, but... Um, but you know, you best believe that when they turn 18, they will talk and um, they will, you know, their story will be very interesting to see what their side was, especially the oldest boy. I don't know how, I think he was maybe I don't know, nine or 10. Summer was five and um, there was three other boys, but um, the oldest, yeah, you know, he's going to know because they were there. They were there the day that Summer went missing. And um, so, yeah, such a sad story. And unfortunately, this, this, this case has gone cold. Um, and until, you know, and if it is true that somebody took off with her in this shed, um, then God knows where she's at. I mean, you know, she could be still alive, though. I mean, you know, there's... She just may be with somebody that's not letting her loose, you know, and crazy things have happened like that, you know, so um, it'd be good if she's still alive, but man, what a horrible story. So anyway, folks, I thought I'd bring this to you. I certainly hope that you will have a, a good evening. I know it's it's so hard to listen to these stories, but, you know, it's important to bring out the craziness of what human life can do and that we need to pay attention and uh, of our children. We need to keep an eye on our children. Um, and, you know, because there's a lot of sick people out there. So, folks, thank you so much. Give you your family, your loved ones a hug. Tell them you love them because, folks, you just never know, right? You never know. Thank you so much. And until next time, folks, this is George. And y'all be safe. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.